to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the country's biggest stars and some of my favourite people. And we've got one for you today, a lady who has been in show business her entire life. Frankie Bridge, how are you? Hello. I'm good, thank you. You? You seem to be pretty normal. I mean, most people who start as a child in show business end up stark raving bonkers. Well, it depends how you define normal. I'd say I'm like averagely normal with just slight weirdness. Have you ever had a period in your life where you can't remember being famous or recognised? I mean, it's an extraordinary existence, isn't it? I suppose so. I've yeah, I've been at it for a long time, about seventeen years now. So, I suppose for me it's normal. But yeah, of course, twenty eighteen's looking incredibly exciting for you. You had huge success on Dancing on Ice on ITV, and you're now going to be doing Worlds of Enchantment from Disney on Ice. This is going to be touring the UK. You can find out more by googling Disney on Ice. You must be excited about this. I can understand why they wanted you to do it. Why did you want to go on tour with this show, though? Well, well, for starters, um, ice skating was something I'd always wanted to do when I was younger. Um, but as I was already singing, dancing, acting or whatever, my parents were like, Frank, you just don't have time. <laughs> um, so I never got to do it. And for me, Disney is just, you know, it's one of those things I grew up with it. It's amazing. So Disney on Ice asks you if you want to come and be in a show. You, you can't say no. Tell me about your life as a child. I mean, when did you first realise that sort of the limelight was for you? Were you always a show off? No, it's, it's a bit weird, actually, because I used to go to just like a local, local community like dance school with my sister. It was actually my dance teacher when I got a bit older said to my parents, oh, you should send her to stage school. And both my parents were a bit like, really? Um, and I'd never sung at home or really anything like that. And um, they asked me if I wanted to go. I said yes. So I just went to like a local one. I didn't go to like a big one in London. Um, and then I ended up getting into s Club Juniors. So it all just kind of, it wasn't, I didn't have the pushy parents. It wasn't like, I just kind of went for like cheese string adverts and things like that. I didn't ever think, oh, I want to be like a celebrity or be like a pop singer or anything. It was like theatre or adverts, really. It's interesting, isn't it? I wonder what the hype was like around that. I missed it because I'm a 38-year-old man, so I suppose S Club 8 <laughs> was never going to be my bag, really. But I yeah. know you were massive, and certainly the furore around you, you were rock stars in your own right, weren't you? Um, yeah, it's mad, because when you're in it, you're just so unaware. It wasn't, and obviously being so young, for me, it was like, well, I wasn't at school and I got to sing and dance, which was what I loved to do. And it's not until afterwards when I look back and I'm like, wow, well, Frank, you were 12 and you were performing at Wembley Arena and travelling the world. And it was, it was pretty mental, but... I think being as I was so young, maybe that's why I'm not so affected now because you just don't, you don't see yourself in that way. And there wasn't social media and stuff then either. So I think it was a bit different. Mm. Can you believe it's over a decade ago since you auditioned for the Saturdays? It's extraordinary. No, that's mad. Yeah, it, it's really weird. Um, the, that just kind of came and went so fast as well. Um, I, I, I'm incredibly lucky to have been in two successful pop groups and so you know it's nuts and what's nice is we, we're all still friends we've all still managed to stay in touch and you know now I get to do weird wonderful wonderful things like learn how to be in Disney on Ice. Yeah, there is that. I'm a deeply unattractive man Frankie you've probably read the posts on the <laughs> internet. Is there anything more perfect than being delicious and hot and popular and sexy and in a band like that? I can't imagine what life on the road is like. I mean, that parting of waves. I've walked in restaurants with celebrities. It is an extraordinary existence. I guess you could easily lose yourself if you're not grounded and, and got your family around you. Well, luckily, I don't think of myself as delicious, and um, which is probably a good place to start. Um I think you just don't become aware of it. Like, I don't, uh, you know, if you're out with people, I think they notice things more than you. Um, and I think that's the best way to be. Luckily, I have lots of friends and family that are always more than eager to keep me very grounded. Like, if I get pictured somewhere, they're probably more likely to, you know, take the mickey out of me than be like, oh, you look amazing. And I think, um, you know, I've still got all my friends from home and stuff, and that makes a big difference. And is it all about the brand now? I mean, I hear people... People talk about this, you know, the Katie Prices and people with the Instagrams and the Twitters and all that stuff. Do you mm. have to take that stuff seriously? Can you be a star without it? 
I think you definitely can. I think, you know, there's a massive calibre of people. I think it depends what level you are. But I think um, for me, uh, it wasn't until after the Saturdays that I really kind of took it seriously. But I still can't take it as seriously as maybe I should. Um, but you do realise you do have to keep on top of it. But I wouldn't, I don't necessarily think of myself as a brand or whatever. I kind of, I think it's good to kind of keep a mix, like, I get sucked into that. Oh, everyone else's life looks perfect and this, that, the other. And as, as much as people want to see that, I like to still keep the other side as well so that I haven't got people going, oh, you know, I could never be like that. And Yes, exactly. From an ugly person's point of view, it is a bit disappointing <laughs> to speak to you, frankly, to be honest. And then I wonder what it goes like when you were in S Club 8 going on to Strictly. I mean, it's a bizarre trajectory your career has taken, but you've been at it a long while, haven't you? Yeah, for me, Strictly was one of those things I just always wanted to do. Like, I'd watched it for years at home with my mum and dad and my grandparents and whatever. And originally, I was just more interested in the sparkly dresses. And then, you know, as I got older, I thought, you know, I'd really love to be able to do that. So for me, that's like one big t like box ticked. and But sadly, it means I don't ever get to do it again. And there's always a part of me that's like, oh, I wish I hadn't done it so I can still get to do it. And I know you've been very honest about postnatal depression and stuff like this. It seems like now we can be honest about what we're feeling. It doesn't always have to be tits and teeth. And I think you helped a lot of people with that. How are you right now? Is your life as perfect as it can be balancing work with being a partner and a mum and all the other stuff we have to do in life? I just think that it just seems to be whatever, you know, whatever your job is and whether you've got kids or not, there just seems to be so much to balance now you kind of it's that pressure on people now to have that perfect life you have to keep up to date with your friends your family your job your kids your whatever it is in life there just does seem to be so much going on and I find it difficult as much as everyone and I'm also like the least organized person on the planet so for me I kind of take each day as it comes um, and just wing it basically <laughs> Yeah. And, and is every day for you now getting out of bed and giving yourself a break? Because we put a lot of pressure on ourselves. It's not even what everybody else is putting on us. Yeah, I, I'm always so hard on myself and a lot of people around me are always like, oh, you need to kind of give yourself a break and whatever. But I think we're all a bit like that. And um, I'm always my biggest critic and... I don't like, especially now I'm a parent, that kind of adds to it as well because you, you want, I, I love working. I still want to work. I love having a career, but I also want to be a good mum and I, I want to be there for my kids and I want to go and see all their things. And it does, it does get a lot. Then you, you know, I'm, I've got a husband, so that needs to, you know, marriage takes work and whatever, everything does. So, um, I am probably quite hard to myself, but I think we all are. And, you know, I do kind of get to an end of the day sometimes. I think, oh, well, we've done it. <laughs> we made it to the end of the day. Five stars, we're still alive. Yeah, exactly. Then, of course, I look at your uh, CV and you're about to turn 30 next year. This is another milestone. Are you excited? Because oh, it changed my life. I, I actually became the most happy with myself then because my 20s was about proving myself and all this. It's exhausting. Is mm -hmm. 30s, do you think, a, a period where you can actually just be yourself and be your true you? Well, I'm hoping so because everyone says this and I just don't see how turning 30 can make you suddenly just like so acceptant of yourself and... I don't know, like, I'm yet to believe this, um, but I, I'm kind of sad to turn 30. I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of not ready to let go of my 20s. But everyone I know says that their 30s were their favourite. So you better not be lying, guys. Yeah. <laughs> been lovely talking to you frankie thank you so much for your time don't miss frankie bridge on tour with disney on ice performing in the worlds of enchantment tour great to talk to you no worries